what is it that an ordinary person can do you know uh, one is to of course be aware of our laws and we are all supposed to be aware of our laws but as an individual who sees something that is happening uh, what is our immediate what should be our response and i'm going to say how do we respond as opposed to react to the situation because i feel there is a very clear distinction between those two words that when we react i feel like you know it can backfire but how do we respond to a situation so like i said we see cruelty around us all the time we need to recognize first what cruelty is and like varnika has clearly you know uh, told you what section 11 entails there is um, no excuse for any animal welfare person or somebody who cares about animals not to have familiarized themselves with a very simple act called the prevention of cruelty to animals act it is extremely it's not written in very difficult language it's got just very it's just 40 sections you can go through it you can uh, you know just keep a copy of it in your phones you should ideally have a bear act something like this uh, in your bags so that you know with practice you will keep uh, getting better at recognizing what section is being violated otherwise you just be you know somebody with a bleeding heart but not knowing what to do because the violations and the consequences of the violations and the procedures to be followed they are all written in the act so while we'll go through uh, all of that with you today um, it nothing compensates for you reading it yourself uh, and it's trust me if you've spent years and years on rescuing animals even one simple rescue of a dog and taking it to a shelter takes at least 2 hours minimum right reading the act would take you half an hour just slow reading and understanding the entire thing just the act not the rules rules would take probably longer but just the act will take you like half an hour so what excuse is there for not doing that so if we just see what uh, you know vadnika has listed uh, is all in section 11 oxytocin oxytocin is in section 12 and these are all violations of the law when you focus on uh, on on reading these you'll be able to identify them uh, ha- happening around you don't read them in a myopic view of you know a dog and a cow and a cat and stuff read them with a broad perspective think of more uh, you know uh situations where law can be violated for example section 11 uh, subsection 1 sub clause e says that animals cannot be confined in a cage or receptacle which does not measure enough in height length and width to allow the natural movement of the animal now we might say oh kutte ko cage mein band kar diya is a violation yeah that's right but how about battery cages how about tying a bhais with a very short rope in a dairy you know so uh, there the numbers are much larger of animal suffering but the people focusing on is on it is is just so few so keep a broad perspective keep a broad viewpoint when you're reading the act and identify cruelties not just in any one species uh, but you know cut across species wherever you might find it in fact for farm animals you might even have to go looking for it because it might not be in your immediate rwa surrounding but it might be somewhere else so when you identify it the uh, law prescribes that you cannot take you know action yourself uh, as in you can't start uh, entering somebody's house and snatching people's animals away no matter what you are you might be a member of a non government organization you might be a, mem- a how it the honorary animal welfare officer or you might be a member of the spca whatever you are you must report it to the police if there is a violation that is evident and if it's an emergency you must report it to the police you can call 100 or whatever number that uh, is a helpline police number of your state and call the police if it is something that you think that baat cheet se sudhar jayega if somebody is just keeping an animal tied in the balcony for a while and you think that it, the dog is suffering then of course you can approach the person in a friendly manner and see if you know if the situation is not very grave if it's a light situation if you think that uh, you know a friendly talk or just uh, explaining the things to him would uh, make it better then why not try that approach first a friendly approach is always good and a lot of times i have felt myself 
that uh, a friendly approach really helps because then people uh, don't really become antagonistic or rigid on their viewpoint. And they say, okay, theek to hai. let's try and in, in fact, offer help. I'll give you an example. There was a girl um, somewhere in our neighborhood who used to just lock up uh, a couple of dogs uh, and they used to bark all day, all night. And whenever she used to come back from work and uh, she used to probably take care of them, but they were clearly not happy, those dogs. And we thought that rather than reporting it to the police first, let's go speak with her. We went and spoke to her and uh, said that, you know, how about... You know, what is the problem? Why do you lock these dogs up? So she said, well, my boundary wall isn't too high. So if I leave them out in the garden, they will uh, jump and, you know, uh, probably run away. And um, so that's why I have to lock them up inside. And now, now they howl. What do I do? I can't leave my job. How, how will I feed myself and them if I leave my job? So it was a very genuine situation. So we helped her with finding somebody who would walk her dogs in the afternoon. Uh, and the dogs are happier and then she was of, of course happy and the whole situation got diffused without making it a legal issue right but uh, if you think that the situation is grave then it is wiser to call the involve the police immediately there may or may not be a cognizable offense but the police in either case must be involved so that nobody you know, turns around like uh, Sanjana correctly said that if you react and you enter somebody's private property, then you could be charged with trespassing. You could be charged with something. You know, people might make videos of you, and then horrible things would happen on the social media saying that oh, you know, ne gali di and ye wo. So never, ever, ever see. Always understand that you belong to a team who are the good people. We have to uh, follow the law in order to make the others follow the law. We. Uh, insist that PC Act should be applied. So we should also uphold the other laws of the land and never get caught on a wrong foot ourselves, abusing people, shouting and screaming, fighting with somebody, being whatever. Even if somebody else is getting all aggro, we should keep our cool and say, OK, here's the problem. I'm going to involve the police because I'm unable to, in a friendly way, handle it myself. So involve the police, please give a written complaint because the police will not do anything without a written complaint so that has to be given in the thana you may call the pc the, when the pcr comes they will not take the written complaint from you you'll have to go and give it in the thana so that's the process of addressing uh, animal law a lot of people start making calls left right and center oh there's an injured animal here Kahan pe hai? Ji, darbhanga mein hai. now what do i do with that call you know, just making panic calls in other cities does not help. Writing emails to somebody sitting in Delhi or Bombay does not help. By the time that person will approach, you know, looking at the email or posting on Facebook, horrible videos of injured animals on Facebook, somebody help, you know. Itni to hum sab mein himmat honi chahiye ki agar humare saamne koi injured animal hai ya kuch hai, to we have to see the solution has to be very local it cannot be broadcasted across the country and then you uh, sort of expect a solution to come from somewhere else you can of course ask for help there there are agent, there are organizations there are um, people who are always willing to help you but you have to take the first step especially if it's a veterinary emergency that cannot wait legal action can probably wait veterinary emergencies cannot wait you have to contact a local veterinarian, get in touch with a private or government vet and get the animal. See, imagine it for yourself. If you were probably involved in an accident, you would want somebody to immediately take you to a place where your pain could be elevated, where a doctor could see. So, you know, that's that I think is very important to recognize in an emergency. Uh, getting uh, veterinary help will have to be local. If uh, the the cruelty is happening in a premises, do not go barging in yourself. Involve the police and um, give a written complaint to the police. Uh, and in your written complaint, it would be so much nicer if you have familiarized yourself with the law and you can indicate where the correct section is which has been violated. Because even the police will take a long time and they will argue a lot if you don't know the law. It will take a very long time to convince most of the police people, they will say, hota hai, isi ka hai, and all of that. But all that time can be saved 
if you are aware that there's a legal provision here and I have it in my phone, I'll pick it out or I have it in my bag. I, I'll take out the, the book and I'll show it to him that here it is. This is, a, this is a violation. And here is the power of the police, which is under Section 32 and 34 of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. So here is the power of the police. You can then compel them to act. So, um, you know, that's that's actually uh, very beautifully put, uh, Gauriji, because I, I mean, my takeaway from this is that, you know, first having a friendly demeanor is very underrated. Like, uh, I think our first thing is to pounce on the other person, especially because, you know, we are uh, animal lovers and we want to, you know, sort of fight for their rights. But just trying to hold back, like how I, you know, how I mentioned that we don't, we respond, which is that we just go approach them. If it's not such a, um, if it's not such a grave offense, like, you know, you finding out about, these dogs and just not they're just alone and they just need like a you know someone to walk them and how it completely diffused the situation and the second thing is to know knowing your laws um and there is no compensating that like you just need to know them in order to compel uh you know uh, anyone in authority to take action uh and the last one is of course in an emergency situation we just don't kind of uh, wait it out uh, because like you said if i was in an accident i wouldn't wait for someone to come and then uh, you know, call the police. It's just I need help that time, so you just have to intervene. So that's uh, that's great. Uh, I'm having there are so many questions already. Thank you so much. Uh, like I had mentioned uh, at the very beginning and at the very outset, we will be taking questions, but it will be towards the end of uh, our webinar. So please hang in there, and you can write all your questions like everybody else is writing. Thank you so much. Um, the next question, um, Gauriji, is for you when you discussed. You know, when you mentioned about the different types of um, natural disasters uh, and the different types of animal emergencies. So, you know, one can be, of course, them being stuck in animal, uh, you know, in, in natural disasters, uh, which is a drought or which is a flood. Um, and the other ones are also a little bit more uh, legal when people have these public interest litigations, uh, public interest petitions that are filed against uh, stray animals, you know, and that involves mass culling of those stray animals. and. Uh, even for example, when we hear about when there was a swine flu, whenever some of some of these epidemics have, uh, you know, taken place, the first thing is oh, wipe out that complete population, at least in our uh, state. So, what is it that we as people, you know, who are uh, animal lovers? I mean, one, I'm an individual, and when I read about it, of course, my blood boils. But how are we supposed to approach situations like these? Um, that is my question. Okay three different replies to the three parts of your question first is uh, if there's a natural disaster please don't venture in if you're not equipped to handle yourself in a natural disaster i'll give you another example when um, in 2013 the kedarnath floods happened um, these are very high altitudes and there were equine stuck uh, in the hilly region um, mountainous region actually and a lot of organizations got so you know, overwhelmed with the whole situation that they just decided, okay, pack your bags and go to Kedarnath. But then they couldn't move beyond the last road head because they were not equipped. Uh, you have to understand and imagine what an, uh, how, how grave a disaster is. You have to be self-reliant when it comes to food, when it comes to even um, probably uh, with tents and with walking shoes, all kinds of Things, different disasters require different kinds of preparations. A flood would probably require different kind of flood. And you might not be equipped to handle everything uh, on the ground. So don't insist on doing, you know, the hands-on rescue if you don't have the capability of it. A lot can happen by convincing the animal husbandry department and the DMs because there is a structure in the country there is a national disaster management authority and then there is there is a state disaster management authority and then the, there is a district disaster management authority which is headed by the district magistrate so if in a certain district you feel that there is you know some animals to be rescued and it's not happening you can ask the ddma that is the district magistrate a lot of people can write to him call him meet him so that he uh, gets the sdrf the state disaster rescue force etc to step in or the animal husbandry department when it comes to other uh, sort of disasters to step in and uh, do the work that you yourself will probably not be able to do no ngo can compensate for the government's efforts so uh, even when we were uh, 
when we deal with disasters, we first activate the government. By the time they get their act together, we start the process so that then the government takes over. Because um, disasters are usually in a large area in the whole state or something, you know, and it's a um, whether it's a drought or it's a flood or it's whatever, it is. Uh, it always requires institutional support. So don't underestimate that. There is also, I mean, the ye to ho gaya ki jab disaster aa gaya hai, tab kya karna? Ek hota hai ki that wartime activity to jo jo hogi to hogi. Peacetime activity kya hai? The disaster uh, authority of the district, uh, the district DDM, which is ko bolte hain. They keep having these drills with every department uh, periodically uh, to practice what will happen, uh, you know, how to mobilize uh, various personnel during a disaster. So uh, why don't you proactively approach your district magistrate and your state disaster management authority to include animal rescue and rehabilitation in the policy so that and, and to have drills of the animal husbandry department and the SDRF in animal rescue so that when it happens at that time your um, your uh, mehnat would have uh, actually made things much easier and a lot fewer lives would be lost for instance when we did that the same uh, whole thing in um, in 2013 after 2013 then during covid the first hard lockdown when the animals are dying every district uh, allocated money in uttarakhand to um, feed the the street animals because they treated it like a disaster and they were equipped to they had the mandate of addressing uh, animal uh, emergency situations uh, during such a disaster so have i mean just mainstream animal welfare wherever it is missing especially in a disaster situation even when there is no disaster so those are peacetime steps that you can take second question was um, regarding pils that uh, against dogs and some court might take a little bit of cognizance or issue notice or say that oh human lives are more precious well all lives are precious uh, nobody is uh, dispensable but uh, there is a very structured law and uh, legal precedent already set. So um, always report it. I, I would say when it comes to um, matters such as uh, a high court order or a, a Supreme Court order, Supreme Court to we keep a very keen eye on, but just pass it and trust the people who are handling that case, uh, you know, to do the needful rather than, you know, en masse uh, spreading the word and you know, like wet hens flapping around, we all get very nervous when anything uh, happens to dogs, or even when there is a shade of uh, of khatra coming on on street animals, then we all get extremely nervous. Well, that's true, but there is a process. It's happened so many times, uh, and high courts have been barred by the Supreme Court from hearing such matters, but they still do. Um, so, uh, I would say there are some organizations such as PIAPO, such as uh, People for Animals, such as um, there's se several other organizations who are handling these cases in the Supreme Court. Just report the cases to them and then probably take an update when you have to and inform them if there's anything on ground that is uh, going wrong. But uh, do not, without taking advice and guidance, rush to court. That would be a very bad thing to do. Sometimes not having a court order is better than having an adverse court order. So uh, do not rush to court. Uh, there are organizations such as, uh, uh, like I said, the major national level organizations that we have are um, involved in a lot of uh, animal related matters in the Supreme Court in several high courts. Always take advice because all animal issues, kahin na kahin ja ke, they're all interconnected. And a lot of precedent gets spoiled if you rush to a high court and you get some kind of an adverse order because probably you did not have the background, the relevant background of other connected matters going on somewhere. And then things go a little difficult. So always take advice and then proceed. For dog matters, don't need to worry. You would have to um, forward whatever the ground situation is or any order of your concern to the organizations that are already handling this case in the Supreme Court and 
take periodical follow ups from them you can we we'd be happy to give updates on that a lot of things cannot be so posted on social media because uh, court matters are sensitive um but uh, we'd be able to uh, since we have been doing that for a while keep things under control as much as possible Uh, so you'd also mention. I mean, um, I think we also uh, talked about, uh, say, like the pandemic. You know, when we talked about, say, monkeypox, or when we talked about uh, uh, the coronavirus, all of them being spread. You know, I mean, they're zoonotic diseases. I mean, very few people actually read up on why this is happening. But the first thing they believe in doing is to cull so many animals. So I think that was also uh, part of this question. That you know, how do we kind of approach that situation? so um basically again i'd say focus on preventive steps yeah uh, for instance the two diseases among animals that are spreading very fast are the lumpy skin disease lsd and the african swine fever uh, the uh, asf they are spreading really really fast in our country and why is it spreading because the transport of animals rules has not been enforced very uh, strictly and uh, veterinary uh, clean chit the certificate fitness to transport certificate is not being issued so we just this month got the animal welfare board of india to give an advice to all the states in some states orders have been issued to uh, enforce the provisions of the transport of animals rules because scientifically even when covid was spreading the uh, the movement of humans was was restricted right everybody had to carry that uh, covid negative report while traveling and etc so that's the only scientific way you stop contain the disease in a certain area don't let it uh, travel all across the country but unfortunately they did not implement the provisions of the transport of animals rules and which is why uh, lumpy skin disease spread started spreading from pakistan and then it's now all over the country uh, uh, the african swine flu uh, fever started spreading from guwahati uh, and now it is across the country and it's taken a really big toll so i'd say take that awbi's letter order uh, and uh, go, approach your district magistrate ask him to issue further orders to um, all his subordinate officers to enforce the provisions there's nothing you know hands on that you can do uh, to alleviate uh, the pain but of animals i mean if it's spreading whatever the vets have to do they have to do they haven't yet discovered a vaccine for it i believe so um, all that you can do is probably segregate animals and whatever so in your own uh, i'd like to deviate a wee bit over here um earlier when i was saying have a friendly approach it's it goes even more for animal welfare people in your cities you know a lot of times we just attack uh, other animal welfare organizations or animal welfare people thinking ye utta acha nahi kar raha hai jitna isko karna chahiye this is not uh, you know so <laughs> we hold such high uh, standards because we probably hold for ourselves and we feel that everybody else is worse than me i would have done it so well and this person is not doing it so well so um, we get into little ego tussles with animal welfare people but that should absolutely not happen and especially in a time where zoonotic diseases are spreading like epidemics all over the place or communicable diseases these two lsd and asf are not zoonotic they are communicable but um, animals are suffering we should try and help out and uh, uh, offer our uh, volunteership or assistance to the gaushalas and other organizations within our districts to help them segregate the animals if they need some more infrastructure otherwise they will just be struggling with sick animals live you know well animals all in one place so go and help them out probably brainstorm with them hum kaise partition create kar sakte hain hum kaise veterinary help zyada la sakte hain so join hands with everybody else in your district to give hands on support and uh, do some advocacy with your district uh, authorities in order to get the provisions of transport of animals rules etc whatever is applicable in a situation in this case definitely the transport of animals rules 1978 they were amended in 2001 and 2009 you will find them on the awbi website if not anywhere else uh, please look at them and right a representation of course kis se baat karne se kuch nahi hota hai you go talk to the dm and come back and he'll say yeah all right whatever hmm? so give a representation written representation along with the animal welfare board of india's letter ask them for an order follow up with his with the dm's ps 
so that he puts up the file and then the dm makes the letter and then it you know he issues it and then take the dm's letter and go to every veterinary hospital and say ye aapne check kiya ki nahi ye aapne check kiya ki nahi then the police would probably uh, be a little more active in um enforcing it because they would have got direct instructions from their district authorities otherwise somebody made a law in 1960 so they might even uh, try and ignore it because they are in a habit of ignoring it for so many years so have when special enforcement drives are to be um initiated then you have to take call out that specific portion ask your dm to do it and then take the dm's letter all over the place and do it of course then awbi's advisory helps in that case but a thana will not know awbi kon hai you know unko to ye bhi nahi pata hoga ki kahan pe hota hai kon se mantralay mein hai so um, with the help of the advisory get orders and directions issued by your district authority So, that's so I, I think that's the. So sorry, so sorry. I think you were saying something, and I missed that. No, just just that much. All right. So you know, um, Gauriji, like I think uh, everybody on this call, I think this is something that we all need to understand that the field that we are working in means that uh, a prerequisite is that we have resilience and that we have the patience and that we have to learn how to endure because. Uh, like you said i mean i think the one thing that stood out to me right at the very beginning was when you said you know it's not enough to have a bleeding heart like you can't be saying that oh it's really hurting me but it's about having the patience to actually follow up through and if you really want to make an impact that's what it really takes so we can't ignore the work that needs to be done and that is something that just goes without saying that if you want something to happen we have to put in the work and that's very important and there is no taking away from it um that and of course you know when uh, i was just thinking of how this is actually a pressure building tactic that if we can get more people to be involved of course we're not losing our cool and when you're talking about advocacy like the more people come together the more we try and put the more they will actually be compelled to take action i'm talking about authorities you know, um, especially say the police and if you're talking about the district magistrates you have to go you know just making the record um so yes that's that's you know that's uh, an amazing i'm just trying to process everything for myself i mean these are questions that are also just Uh, my own questions i feel like are being answered uh, through this conversation the next uh, question is of course again just directed towards you and that is uh, intentional versus unintentional um, you know infliction of cruelty on animals one is that you know you were driving uh, of course we need to be very mindful about multiple things but in case um, you know if we've been uh, if there has been an unintentional act of cruelty how is that supposed to be approached as opposed to uh, you know and when someone is doing it with that very intention of hurting the animal of course this means that and we will be taking on the next question about filing the fir about the legal part and the intentional part of it but what about the unintentional i don't think a lot of us know how we have to approach that yeah so i have a thumb rule if uh, somebody has unintentionally hit an animal um and clearly you know probably while backing the car or something probably wasn't very mindful of checking under the car like we do um nahi kisi ko itna intention tha but ho gaya and if that person is um, apologetic and probably is just happy to take the animal to a vet or something um then uh, i would not press for any legal charges but if that person if is just hitting an animal and brazenly running away from that place then it actually becomes intentional um i mean uh, then it would be wise to take the number of the gadi or whatever uh, and report it um also see if the police can trace any cctv uh, in the area which can assist in nabbing the person so unintentional with the you know the follow up of of trying to at least giving some thought towards helping the animal is uh, something that i would not say is a uh, actionable legally actionable thing of course um, that would have to have a follow through as well that person will have to take full responsibility uh, later on of uh, complete recovery of the animal did that answer it or Yeah, yeah it did it did uh, just i think that's a very important part just like knowing if a person is uh, gracious enough to come clean and say okay i'm going to take the effort that's that's enough said uh, so we know that it's not it was not done with but that that's, 
that's restricted to street accidents but there are also other ways in which people are uh, unintentionally harming animals uh, as in somebody doesn't know that uh, unko apne kutte ka nasbandi karana chahiye and if they are right. letting, letting their cats I mean, a lot of hoarders with a golden heart really love their animals so they're going on multiplying them right i mean that's just a horrendous situation in that case uh, you would have to intervene get that person if he is the not capable of understanding that his actions are harming animals um then you would have to take the you know the necessary legal steps to alienate that animal because sometimes even if it's unintentional and the person does not have the capacity i'll give you another example there was a person somewhere in vasant kunj long ago had about 26 animals in a small pack dog and those dogs were just completely they had eaten up the whole house there was nothing in his house even some remnants some wooden remnants of some furniture was left there was just nothing else there was that thick a layer of shit all over the place they were making babies and they were eating them up because they were never being fed also it was so horrible so and, and this person used to totally love them i mean can you believe that then there is a mental problem somewhere and we of course uh, used section 33 of the prevention of cruelty to animals act to get a warrant from a magistrate to enter the premises take away the dogs and that person did not intentionally inflict cruelty but the situation so arose that without his intending to he was actually harming the animals a lot and no amount of friendly uh, conversation would have solved it Yeah, I was actually going to just ask for a, any other example that you had, but you pretty much answered that as well. That you know, uh, while it's important to know that it is important at some point of time to intervene, even if it's not intentional, and they may not know what's happening, but you do, so you have to take action, right? So um, I just think you know, now that we've mentioned about the number of cases and the cruelty that takes place, uh, a natural uh, progression to that conversation is. how does one file an fr and that's when i would want uh, varnika to come in uh, you know what is the process of filing an fir any prerequisites um, how can we follow up you know and uh, how do we make sure that action is taken against the perpetrator um, so yeah uh, varnika anything from you please so first and foremost you know before filing an fir i would you know as goriji said a person should know the law please know the law before going to the police because if you don't know the law then uh, you know whatever you were saying because police don't want to take animal cases seriously what they will try to do they will try to send you back and so first thing is that a person should have the act just google you will get the act online or buy a bear act and have it with you then a person you know if um, cruelty has occurred person should know the difference between two kind of offenses one is cognizable and non cognizable because in non cognizable cases fir cannot be filed so you know if if you say uh, you are going to file a fir for beating and kicking of a dog police will not file a fir for this so because it is a non cognizable case so and he will only file a complaint and he will give you a diary number so for a fir there is no format there is no format just write to the sho to the uh, where the offense has occurred go to the jurisdiction and even if you know if there is no you can also file to, to that i will come later first go to the jurisdiction like agar kalka ji mein hua hai to go to the kalka ji thana and tell the police officer what actually has happened agar like it's it, it's a hit and run case or it's a brutal you know killing case or it's a mass killing case tell them this this has happened if you know who has write the facts to the sho uh, fir under uh, under this 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 act pca act and say the facts whatever you know tell the police ask then ask also a police to do the post mortem what happens police police generally ask in animal cases the complainant only to do the post mortem actually that is not right this is the duty of police they should do the post mortem but people don't know about it and you know they are they just cannot do anything so in some cases what i have seen uh, for a street dog the complainant you know themselves are going to uh, 
wet hospitals and they are trying to get the postmortem done and police then also want the postmortem from a government hospital so all these things are there so if you know all these things now then you can pressurize police see if it is a cognizable case there is no way you can reject you can say no that you cannot file a fir because they are bound to file a fir second they have to do the postmortem and there is no format just in a just take a pen and paper hath se bhi likh do type karke likh do ki ye ye yahan yahan pe hua tha if you know who has done it write the name of the person address age what kind of brutality has happened write that and also pca act to hai hi section 11 you see see ki like uh, you know from in the section 11 clauses 1 a se lekar o tak and section 12 kahan pe aapka fall kar raha hai aap wo bhi dalo also there is section 429 in indian penal code it's about maiming aap wo bhi dalo uske baad like you know you will really have to pressurize police in such cases aur unko bolo ki you will have to register the fir and you should also receive a copy of it which they are not going to give to you but if you know if you will tell them that we know the law then they will give you the copy so once it is registered when they give you the number once they give you the number the next procedure is that they have to investigate the case whatever evidence try whatever evidence you already have give that to police if you have the cctv footage if you have any witnesses police will take your um, statement during the investigation stage do all that and within 60 days police has to file their charge sheet in the court then the matter goes to the court after the fir is registered uh, after two months of the fir is registered so uh, you can also you know check ki why this much time has been taken and why uh, and why the police has you know uh, not gone to the magistrate and file the charge sheet in the case so actually don't you know, fir is fir is डोंट टेक की क्या है इट्स जस्ट अ फर्स्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन रिपोर्ट जो भी आपको पता है आप उसमें लिख दो कोई भी फॉर्मेट नहीं है पुलिस को बोलो यू आर बाउंड टू रजिस्टर इट और वो रजिस्टर करेंगे इट इज देयर ड्यूटी नॉन कॉम अगर एंड डोंट टेल दिस टू पुलिस इट्स माई पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस की ये कॉग्निजेबल है अगर मतलब लाइक इट्स अ नॉन कॉग्निजेबल केस डोंट टेल दिस टू पुलिस आप अपनी एफ आई आर रजिस्टर कराओ because anyways they you know they don't want to register in many times pc act ke bare mein they don't know much they actually don't know we have to like tell them see uh, like uh, other like um, if someone is someone has abandoned uh, a pet aur usko cage mein rakha hai is pe aap kya karoge first uh, you will try to mitigate with the person after that you will go to the police agar wo solve nahi ho raha hai तो इस केस में व्हाट विल पुलिस डू दे विल ओनली फाइल अ कंप्लेन दे विल नॉट फाइल अ एफ आई आर इन दिस केस बट टू यू नो मेक द प्रेशर एंड एंड एवरीथिंग सो जस्ट फॉर फर्स्ट जस्ट आज कि आप इसमें एफ आई आर करो एंड जस्ट वेट फॉर द रेस्पॉन्स ऑफ द पुलिस व्हाट दे आर सेइंग इफ दे नो देन इट्स ओके एंड इफ दे आर एक्चुअली यू नो फाइलिंग द एफ आई आर विच दे वोट then that is also fine but in cognizable cases you should know ki isme to isme fir register karni hi karni hai they are bound to register the fir in in such cases and also remember section 429 of indian penal code together with the pc act 1960 and keep following up इन्वेस्टिगेशन कहाँ पे जा रही है यू शुड हैव द फोन नंबर ऑफ द एस एच ओ आप उनको हफ्ते में फोन करो कि सर कहाँ पे आपकी इन्वेस्टिगेशन पहुंची इफ दे नीड एनी हेल्प गिव प्रोवाइड देम एवरी हेल्प यू कैन जहां से भी मतलब यू शुड यू नो यू दो शूड यू शुड ऑल्सो कॉपरेट विद दैम की क्या है कैसे है इफ यू हैव एनी आई विटनेसेस टेल देम एवरीथिंग so sure. thank you so much vanika i think that's really helped um, sorry anything else you'd like to add so uh, this was uh, only relating to fir but you know yeah. in cases where fir cannot be registered so there is uh, another procedure which is under section 1163 of criminal procedure code you can directly go to the magistrate court and if you know magistrate thinks fit he can direct the police to investigate and then the fir can be registered so that is the other way in cases where fir is not registered by the police 
so you can also directly go to the magistrate magistrate court okay i'll i'll quickly summarize what varnika said yeah so um yeah fir is very very important uh, what is in your hands to write a good complaint yeah how is a complaint written it's basically like a kahani you have to have some elements in that fir which are very important first is i mean you have to tell it like a story today at such and such location at such and such time i was going over here or whatever i, I saw what or somebody else called you ye jo bhi kuch hai jahan se bhi pata chala aur aap udhar ja rahe the aur aapko is particular jagah pe aise huliye ka aadmi is aise janwar ke sath ye karta hua dikha aur aap uski suchna police ko de rahe hain so it's basically it should have all the elements and try to stick to the truth as much as you can just be absolutely don't get caught on a lie otherwise your fir if not in uh, you know the same day then within 3 months it will be shut off and it will be uh, even more of an encouragement for the perpetrator of the crime so do not get caught in a lie such such jo hua hai usko ek kahani ki tarah likhte hain usme samay hona chahiye usme jagah honi chahiye usme कौन से जानवर के साथ या कितने जानवरों के साथ किस प्रकार के आदमी ने क्या किया ये पूरे डिटेल्स होने चाहिए और उसका जो भी विटनेस होगा वन विटनेस वुड ऑब्वियसली बी बी यू बट इफ यू नॉट अ विटनेस देन हुएवर इज द विटनेस हिज डिटेल्स शुड बी देयर आइडियली यू शुड बी द विटनेस इन योर एफआईआर ओके अदरवाइज हुएवर इज द विटनेस शुड राइट द एफआईआर देमसेल्फ्स सो दैट इट्स अ फर्स्ट हैंड अकाउंट एंड इट्स नॉट अ हियरसे अगर हेयर से होता है कि हमें किसी से पता चला है ये वो करके तो केस इज नॉट स्ट्रॉन्ग एट ऑल कॉग्निजिलिटी ऑफ ऑफेंसेस इज इन सेक्शन 31 ऑफ द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ क्रूजी टू एनिमल्स एक्ट दोज आर द ऑफेंसेस बेसिकली इट्स सेक्शन 11 का एल एन ओ व्हिच आर कॉग्निजिबल एंड सेक्शन 12 व्हिच इज कॉग्निजिबल सेक्शन 12 डील्स विद ऑक्सीटोसिन एंड सेक्शन एल बेसिकली डील्स विद हिटिंग किलिंग ऑफ एन एनिमल व्हिच इज इन giving it unnecessary pain and suffering so that is cognizable if an animal is injured you can use section 111 l and you can also use section 429 if there has been an element of mischief in it but an fir is not the be all and end all of it ye mat socho ki bas fir nahi hua hai to bas ab to khatam kuch legal action nahi hua hai even in a non cognizable offense where an fir will not be lodged by a police you can ask them and insist to register an ncr a non cognizable report non cognizable reports magistrate ke paas jati hai kuch ko magistrate chahe to uh, investigate karne ko bol sakta hai nahi bol sakta hai aap khud bhi magistrate ke paas ja sakte hain in a non cognizable matter under section 190 red with 200 crpc agar cognizable matter hai to 1563 mein jaise varnika ne bataya tabhi bhi magistrate ke paas ja sakte hain but you need to have good legal advice your legal uh, हेल्प इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट शुड बी अ स्ट्रॉन्ग वन क्रिमिनल लॉयर चाहिए हमें इसमें कोई भी जो डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट में क्रिमिनल लॉ प्रैक्टिस करता हो अगर आपका ऐसा कोई दोस्त होगा तो अच्छी मदद कर सकेगा आपके एप्लीकेशन बना सकेगा बट uh, इसका एक ये एक शुरुआत होती है दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप लाइक आई हैड फाइल्ड केसेस इन 2011 10 जिसके बयान मुझे अभी तक देने जाना पड़ता है कोर्ट में इट्स फन दिस इज नो प्रॉब्लम you know it's it's only good because that means that the the uh, the culprit is also hanging for the past 12 13 years and he's not been acquitted but um, i have to state the truth in my fir so that remembering the truth is no, not a challenge and that later on when i give go to give my bayan i can just read my fir and uh, stick to my story hmm? which is the true story which should be the true story uh for an fir which the police is not i i think that's the logical thing that if the police just absolutely uh, says no that hum to nahi likhenge to kya karenge to usme supreme court ke orders hain lalita kumari ka ek judgment hai i'd ask uh, uh, you guys um, sanjana varnika to share it with everybody if you can in the chat box um hum unko court order dikha sakte hain ki there is a simple the, the cognizable offense ko register karne ke liye police mana nahi kar sakti fir bhi agar koi aise jo mana kar raha hai koi pehle koi aisa hi mana karega fine aise jo se baat kariye dhang se baat kariye usko agar aap berat dikha kar batayenge ki ye gadbad hai ye violation ho raha hai to fir wo uh, 
मना नहीं हुई ऐसे नहीं बोल पाएगा कि जाओ जाओ कहीं से यू नो कोई एनिमल लवर्स आ गए जिनको कुछ नहीं पता है सो ऑलवेज इंसिस्ट वेन यू हैव टू विथ अ कॉपी ऑफ द बैर देन शो देम where what exactly has been violated and uh, you should have something by way of evidence like a video or something or, or an injured animal uh, but uh, escalate it go to the sho if sho is not listening go to the dsp or the co the circle officer har district ki har state ki alag alag hierarchies hoti hain but go to the higher officer then go to the next higher officer and then go to the next higher officer till you reach the head of the district police the ssp or the sp or the commissioner or whatever uh you can also try tweeting about it uh, using the handle of the police a lot of times especially some states are very touchy about it if you use the handle of that state police and say that this has happened we are at this thana and no help is coming then they get very um, you know suddenly they get very excited about helping you out uh, i i have seen that happening a lot in in up you ha- you just have to tag the up police and they will jump into action <laughs> so that that helps um you can also explore other ways as in uh, if you probably know the mayor and whatever you can put in a word because sometimes the police the police ka kya hota hai unke paas ek cha- wo hota hai ki hame kam fir likhne hain to show low crime in their area so that's why they oppose it's not that they don't like animals that's why they oppose filing an fir they want to generally show low crime so they oppose every fir now uh, it depends on how important you make the case out to be uh, if you are unaware of the law they will think it's not very important so um, get you know your uh, the exact legal provisions write a sensible fir with all the details I mean, don't make it into a four-page long shole ka script, but just keep it to the facts of the case which are relevant, hmm? and um, uh, then insist on it. Of course, uh, you can always uh, show them the Supreme Court order, which says that a cognizable offence has to be registered. But even if it's not registered, sometimes when I do a lot of police trainings, what do I tell them? That ओवरलोडिंग है ओवरलोडिंग के केसेस अगर ये दर्ज करेंगे तो दिन में सौ केस दर्ज करने पड़ेंगे उतना तो मुझे पता है नहीं करने वाले राइट बैल गाड़ियों पे घोड़ा गाड़ियों पे ओवरलोडिंग होती है तो इतनी सारी होती है तो आई जस्ट टेल देम प्रोबेबली इफ यू कांट रजिस्टर अ केस इन एनी केस इट्स अ नॉन कॉग्नाइजेबल ऑफेंस व्हाई डोंट यू जस्ट स्टार्ट चेकिंग देम इफ यू ओनली इफ इफ यू ओनली आस्क द पुलिसमैन टू इंटरवीन बाय चेकिंग दीस पीपल बाय कॉलिंग देम टू द थाना making them sit and uh, you know um, uh, do some initial inquiry that will scare small criminals enough you know probably it will resolve some situations for instance somebody is constantly threatening you when you going to uh, feed dogs constantly eyeing you and whatever whatever and you're feeding dogs and you're getting very restless about it but it's really not uh, a, a criminal cognizable offense that you can report to the police you can still ask the police for help you can go and tell the sho that you know mujhe itni dikkat ho rahi hai aap please inko zara kisi constable ek do ko bhej ke meri inse baat kar lijiye just so that they lay off and uh, whatever so you can try doing it yourself also you can ask the police to help also so the police is there for your uh, protection always remember that and approach the police with that mindset डोंट अप्रोच द पुलिस इज द माइंड सेट दैट ये तो हमारे दुश्मन है और ये हमें मना करेंगे और अभी हम इनके ऊपर तो केस करेंगे ऑलवेज अप्रोच दम विद फ्रेंडली अप्रोच एंड से दैट यू नो दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम नेवर यू नो गो विद नेगेटिव माइंड सेट दैट देर नॉट गोइंग हेल्प ऑफकोर्स इफ दे डोंट हेल्प यू देन यू कीप एस्कलेटिंग राइट uh um, thank you so much i think there is uh, so much more that we wanted to of course discuss uh, but we are running out of time and uh, due to the paucity of time i think we're going to take on questions uh, from the audience so just uh, letting everybody know anyone who has questions and i see a lot of hands up please drop your questions um, in the activities uh, uh, you know i can uh, you can see it at the bottom if you are if you logged in from your phone or if it's it will be on the on the bottom right if you've logged in through your laptop and in the q and a domain you can leave your questions so we will be taking the questions from there and we have already received a few other questions from uh, you know well in advance from other um, uh, participants 
so the first one says uh, what do we answer people or who do, what do we say to people who blame the feeder if the dog has if the dog they feed has bitten someone uh and then they say that you know it's because you come and feed the dogs that's why they attack people uh and you need to stop giving them food so what happens in those cases uh karaji maybe from your experience you can share a little bit and one don't important. engage don't engage this is a conversation that would lead to no place you know people have, will have a thousand things to say it's best to um not get entangled in a conversation like that if somebody tells you aapki wajah se i will just say that you know uh, a lot of people feed dogs and i also feed dogs but that doesn't mean that i encourage it to you know there's no conspiracy of forgetting you bit and happening over here and uh, mm-hmm. make light of the situation do not give much uh, importance to such things otherwise they just uh, and do not get aggro about it make make light of it and say ki aap to kuch bhi bol rahe hain aisa kuch nahi although express sympathy that the dog is bitten that person do not say ke aur kuch bhi to nahi hua hai ye are 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 kya ho gaya hai oh ho kitna kharab hua so this just without being insensitive to the person who's been bitten do not let the conversation go very far because this conversation will have no logical answer so uh, only if that person harasses you too much then you involve a constable or something but in a friendly manner just try to brush it under the carpet and finish it because there's no there's no science there's no logic that you're feeding the dogs or somebody's biting you right um thank you uh, anything from you vanika please come in whenever uh, uh, you would also like to add anything that you would also like to share i think i will agree with god to not to indulge because you know such things uh, tend to get out of hand he will say something you will say something and instead of you know issue of dog bite it may there are chances chances it may become some another issue only and you will have to go to thana for assault or you know nuisance or any other thing so it's better ki okay agar kaat liya hai to try to make them understand ki theek hai kaat liya hai hum itna bol do ki hum dhyan rakhenge aage se nahi hoga sab kuch theek hai ask him have you got the injections lagwa liye and everything try to just mellow down the matter i think that is the best thing because in such issues what happens is it goes to the another end and the main issue khatam ho jata hai wo kuch aur hi ban jata hai right uh, thank you so much i think the other question that we've got uh, which is uh, very similar to the one we also have in the q and a domain is um, that this is a very good question what are some of the must have resources uh, for those starting to deal with animal cruelty related emergencies someone who just got into the profession or someone who just started to take some of these cases on where is it that they can find all this this book find this book it's called the bear act b a r e bear act and there is another um, uh, link that i have just posted in the chat box that is the protocol for dealing with uh case property animal so the protocol for search seizure who has the power under which sections of crpc and tca it's all in that protocol so print it out hmm? it's been published by the animal welfare board of india just print it out and keep it with you that's that's the first thing that you need to know not the last because once the learning starts then it goes goes on and on so get your bear act flag it up like i have flagged it up chote chote flags and okay my murga has eaten it up but uh, there are some flags there used to be some flags here so <laughs> the important sections that are the important set of sets of rules a, a lot of times you get uh, just just panic emails from people there are 10 pet shops in my city which are violating the law but which law to nahi pata so only if you have this act then you can see pet shop rules and you can read them कि वायलेट कर रहे हैं तो क्या पहले तो किस चीज को वायलेट कर रहे हैं क्या उनको मानना चाहिए पेट शॉप्स को जो नहीं मान रहे हैं फिर इसमें लिखे हैं सारे उसके कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस अगर हम वो पढ़ लेंगे तो फिर हम बहुत बेहतर एक्शन ले सकेंगे अपने खुद के डिस्ट्रिक्ट में अपने खुद के स्टेट में और हमें ऐसे भयानक ई नहीं भेजनी पड़ेंगे कि ये देखो ये चिड़िया की कितनी खराब हालत है और ये यू नो देन वट यू डू दीज आर लोकल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट लॉ एंड ऑर्डर इज अ स्टेट सब्जेक्ट Mm-hmm. somebody is sitting somewhere making calls will not be able to 
resolve it as nicely as you would be able to resolve it with the help of your local authorities, your district authority, your state authorities. So if you know the law, they will take you seriously, they'll help you out. So have this and have that document, which I've sent you a link for. And most of the other protocols, uh, for instance, for animal birth control, there is the, uh, the revised module uh, for uh, dog population management, rabies eradication, and reducing man-animal conflict. Both men. But that's the document which you need to know. And there are some Supreme Court orders, such as the um, 6910-2009 uh, SLP number, uh, the orders dated 410-2016 and 1711-2016. Very important orders that you must read. Also, you will be happy to know that today, on the e gazette the new animal birth control rules have come out please do not uh, skip reading them you can read them there's nothing that you have to do about it right now because they're in a draft stage but you can look at it it's a good set of rules and um, also provisions for feeders there uh, but it's still in draft stage not to be enforced till a final notification comes out it will be heavily probably opposed by some people but uh, we'll see it through so Things will keep getting easy, but uh, you have to acquaint yourselves with the existing laws in this book. It's for 200 bucks. Just buy it from any kacheri of your district. The local district court area will have a law uh, library or law publishing book or uh, bookstore. Buy it from there and keep checking the AWBI website for time to time advisories that they keep bringing out one such important advisory is this um, case property protocol. There are also uh, advisories on um, what to do with shelters, what kind of bookkeeping is required in shelters, uh, what kind of uh, transport uh, protocol should be um, used during LSD, ASF outbreaks, etc. So that's that's an important resource. And there are other laws also. I mean, don't con confine yourself to PCA Act okay. and AWBI. Once you uh, have understood this enough, then you can venture into the Wildlife Protection Act and your State Co Cattle Protection Act and your State Animal Sacrifice Prohibition Act. Then you can look at the State Municipal Corporation Act, which will have a lot of animal-related uh, issues being addressed. There, there will be the state police act like delhi police act uh, has a lot of animal related um, stuff in fact it says that all pc offenses are cognizable under delhi police act so um, those acts are also to be looked into but you start with the pc right um so just to let everybody else know as well we've also opened the chat box in case you want to ask your questions you could also drop them there uh, one of the more uh, i think this is a very uh, common question that we're getting from everybody, but I think uh, if I have to get the essence right of all these questions, uh, uh, what happens when someone who's abusing a dog starts to abuse the humans who are also taking care of the dogs? I think this is a very common one. I'm getting so many of them in the chat as well as in the chat box. So what happens when, uh, like someone is saying that I, you know, one of them is saying that I have your address and uh, I know where you stay and everything and, you know, pretty much uh, saying or, uh, implying that they can be there anytime or they can probably cause harm to the people so what is one supposed to do then then the dog goes out of the equation then it is just simple threatening and intimidation you will deal with it like you would deal with any such similar threatening intimidation that happens in any other situation for instance you're going to buy sabzi and your sabzi wala says tumhe tumhe dekh lunga aur main ghar pe aake marunga mujhe pata hai kahan rehte ho tab kya karoge I mean, it's the same thing. You will inform the police. You will give the uh, complaint in writing to the police. Of course, the police will try to resolve the matter. But then you insist on getting a written apology from the person. That's what I use as a thumb rule. Uh, if at all a case is not being registered, if it's a grave offense, you'll have to see what the uh, degree of the intimidation is. Uh, if it's not a grave offense and if you don't have any CCTV or video kind of thing for it and it's just your word against his, then you say, I'm going to back off only if this person gives a written uh, apology to the Thana, through the Thana to me. So then there is a record of his misbehavior and next time you can then insist on an FIR. So involve the police, of course, then don't involve the dog because now it's 
it's it graduated to the other level of intimidation of a human right. then whatever the provocation may have been it may have been a dog it may have been a cow it may have been a bird but um, the violation would that be of intimidation and uh, threatening uh vanika anything from your do we have any cases that you receive who also say the same thing anything that you would like to share from your experience actually there are many such such cases and this question was actually the extension of the question we were doing before ki agar kutte ne kaat liya jo usko beat kar rahe hain what so in such situations like you know he, the person can intimidate and it will and it becomes a whole new issue it is all it it also becomes a criminal intimidation so like there was a case which came to chapo which was somewhere near to model town wahan pe they had put you know spikes gaadiyon ke upar and when the dogs were so that dog dogs cannot sit on their car in the night during the night so there was this girl who used to take care of these dogs and used to feed them so due to these spikes dogs were getting injured and the case came to us then what we first did we obviously uh, we got the photos we asked her for the photo she was the photos of the injured dogs and the cars with the spikes and these people uh, you know who have kept a spike on above the car so uh, when it is started it was it, it was a show of only only dog injured dog but you know later on uh, the main subject was drifted and they this girl and the owner of the cars they both started to fight with each other and there were several abuses so actually the main issue which was there of the dog cruelty it was left behind and then you know police was only dealing about the case of like sexual assault or gali galoj or threatening so this has happened so this is where we came in between and we tried to get these party you know mediate that first of all um, we asked them that what you guys are doing by keeping spikes on the car is not right and it is causing cruelty to the dog so humbly humbly we said hey, if you can remove it and you know you can see some other alternative for it we also try to make the police understand ki come up with a middle path aur ye jo issue hai aap isko yahi pe rehne do and these parties you know they should withdraw their complaints other than the dog issue jo bada diya tha unhone so withdraw that and just take care of this case so you know uh, so this happened a lot so this was one such case um now i am not uh, we now i am not sure what happened to the cases of sexual assault and threat and threatening which were filed before the police but the dog shoe was uh, half settled some of the residents had removed the spikes we tried to make them understand ki please don't do this and then it happened and in some other cases also you know like dog feeding cases uh, recently i think in last year there was there was this dog feeding issue in south delhi vasant bihar wahan pe kafi dog feeding ka issue ho raha tha aur so wo issue from dog feeding with um it again became some another issue the people you know who were against the dog feeding they again started to threaten the people who were feeding the dogs and they filed the complaint to the police and they were also you know trying to go to court not not on the issue of dog feeding but on the issue of their ladai jhagda so even in this case then i think gauri ji also knows about this case because it was a well renowned case and awbi also uh, came to the rescue unhone dog feeding points bhi banaye the lekin uske baad bhi wo manne ko taiyar nahi the but um the issue from dog feeding also led led to other issues yeah that's right so there are lots of court orders with in this regard you can carry some but again police walon ko 25 page ka court order padhane se kuch fayda nahi hai so this is a situation that required not just law enforcement but law reform which we have done and i'm like i said earlier 
in a few more months, things will get better. You would have a, a law protecting. Uh, I just also so there. Um, I'm also taking on questions from the chat box. It says that the juvenile has done some major cruelty on animals, as and which has left them disabled or nearly dead. How do you proceed with the matter to ensure punishment? Okay, you inform the police anyway. They will of course get in touch with the uh, um, with the necessary authorities because dealing with authorities. Uh, uh, who have the, you know, gen police can't arrest children, uh, anybody who's less than 18 year years old. So they need uh, to get a NCPCR person or something and uh, uh, then remove him from the situation. And case can be registered anyway, but it would be um, in certain sections which are commensurate with the juvenile law. Um, and the children would then be produced before a juvenile magistrate. Um, you will proceed as per the law, but uh, the police have certain uh, safeguards. Uh, they can't keep the juvenile sitting in a police thana after arrest, uh, just like that. So I don't have much experience uh, regarding this, but that's how you uh, address situations where a juvenile has been uh, involved. Like to add to it, so like there is a JGB board for juveniles. There is a separate court. They don't go to district court, and juveniles are covered under the Juvenile Justice Act. And so, if uh, you know they are caught up, they will be made. They have to appear in JGB or unko. Uh, like you know, for this act, their punishment wouldn't be what is given under the PC Act. You know, sometimes they are like. Unko chhod denge generally because these are bailable offenses majorly. Or also, agar nahi, to like their punishment is also like volunteering. Do din ke liye they will be sent to volunteer. Agar de nahi hoga JJB board ko, so this is what is done with them. That's a um, lacuna because a lot of times you see these. Horrible acts done by juveniles on uh, uh, social media, etc. They keep putting right. up things. So uh, that that law, the JJ Act, does require uh, an amendment to deal with uh, animal cruelty done by children. But it should be reported nonetheless. Never ever think that the punishment is too little or the person will get who's caught free. So let's not report it. We must report. So that at Jabi reports pile up hongi or Jabinka quantum itna bada hoga, tabhi to policy me reform aega. Agar kui report hi ni karega, to policy reform ki kisi goza rati ni pata chalegi. Isn't it? So always report it. When I was very heartbroken many, many years ago, and I said, oh, this penalty is so low, this act is nonsense, kuch ni usakta, kya hai, pachas rupi ma kuch ni hota. So at that time, uh, an officer told me that. Um, while the act of the PCA might be too lenient or what uh, towards the accused person, but at least think of the positives. Think of what can happen rather than doing nothing. Think of what can happen. You can at least remove the animal from a cruelty situation using the case property animals rules, using section 32, 34, and 35, you can, and section 29. You can actually uh, give relief to the animal. Utna to ho sakta hai. Sometimes the animal has a large monetary value. So that is more than 50 rupees. Then the, the accused has to pay money to uh, give upkeep and maintenance to the animal. If you are following, if you are enforcing yeah. say, the case property man management rules. So I'm saying that don't worry about ke, oh, the bacha hai, the chut jayega. Koi baat nahi. Aap uska Record पर तो ले आई क्योंकि अगर आप नहीं लाएंगे तो वो ग्रेजुएट करेगा वो कहेगा ओके आई कैन डू दिस एंड गेट अवे आई कैन डू समथिंग मोर एंड गेट अवे नेक्स्ट टाइम आई कैन डू इवन मोर हिनियस क्राइम्स एंड गेट अवे ऑलवेज रिपोर्ट इट लेट इट बी ऑन द रिकॉर्ड ऑफ द पर्सन ऑफ कोर्स दैट रिकॉर्ड विल बी सील्ड बिकॉज बच्चों के रिकॉर्ड्स सील्ड होते हैं अपटू एटीन ईयर्स बट इन केस ही कमिट्स एन अदर क्राइम समटाइम इन इन द फ्यूचर देन दैट रिकॉर्ड विल कम अप
it gives a seek to the accused that ki because they think ki, oh any we have just done something to an animal nothing will happen to us but when it get reported it you know it's like a mirror for them ki maybe maybe they will understand ki, oh god i i will never do it again now hmm. so, right that no that's very important so you were saying something wonderful yeah, yeah, I was saying this that, that you know it should be reported and even in the, the PCA yeah. first offense ke liye is 25 50 rupees and for second offense it is 100 rupees and some imprisonment of three months. So, if first offense aapka reported here and you are again coming for second offense, then you will uh, you, are, you are going to jail maybe. So, always report a case, Bacha ho, bada ho, doesn't matter. All right, so uh so many questions uh we'll take on one which is also very very common it says um uh, what do we do in in cases where we have not been able to record the cruelty in act uh, we don't have our phones with us we have not been able to actually make a note of it but a cruel uh you know uh, someone has been an animal has been subjected to cruelty so what happens then and if we have maybe one uh and if there is one last question is also what amounts to, and I think Koriji, you can come in here. It says, What amounts to cruelty and emergency in cases of uh, farmed animals like cows and hens and meat shops? So, those are the two. One is, of course, the first one is, What do we do when we don't have evidence? When we haven't, we don't have recorded evidence? Manika, yeah, Koriji, witness, your witness account is also an evidence. Your, you, if you are an eyewitness to the offense, then you can uh, give a written complaint to that regard. And uh, then later on uh, during the investigation, you can again reiterate your uh, your bayan, and that would be uh, that that's also part of evidence, right? So uh, there may not be any uh, video recording of it. Even if there is video recording of it, you will have to probably go through a whole um, the process of giving a Section 65B certificate under the Evidence Act, uh, randomly recording people's phone calls and stuff does not amount to evidence at all unless your phone is deposited and goes for forensic examinations to uh, you know basically ascertain whether you have uh, not tampered with that uh, video that audio recording or video recording in any way so your own uh, evidence your own um, witness account is also uh, has to be given any some weightage if there are other witnesses, you can uh, get them to co-sign on the complaint as well, so that later on their bayans can also be taken, and they can also uh, give a deposition before the magistrate and uh, agree with whatever has been uh, factually uh, happening. And um, you don't, I mean, it's not mandatory. It, it makes your case very strong if there is a CCTV evidence or somebody's made a video or something, but. So a lot of times, uh, people's witness accounts make up all the evidence that there is, provided that they are strong witnesses. You have to um, be very factual and very clear in your communication, and you have to stick to your story. Don't give one witness account, you know, if you dilly-dally, then your case goes out of the window because there's no other material evidence. Hmm? But if uh, you are sticking to your story, if uh, what you have written, what you are saying in court later on, if, if there's consistency, then that should be uh, quite sufficient. Right. Uh, and uh, lastly, because we don't have much time, uh, there is this question about what amounts to cruelty uh, with respect to farmed animals like hens yeah. and cows. So there's basically, we, we can probably get, there's a farmed animal which has been chuk, 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 chuk going on my computer all this time. <laughs> the entire life is just full of food. It's full of food, right? From the time that they are born to the time that they go for slaughter. End of life suffering is very important, which is something that we see in meat shops and slaughterhouses and this and that. But their housing condition is so bad. Like, marne ka duration to phir bhi bahut kam hota hai. In the meat shop, probably they say for two, three days and the event of dying is uh, horrible but it lasts a shorter span than their entire life so 
be a little proactive and look at the poultry farms and the dairies in your area, the piggeries in your area, the fish farms in your area, and uh, report those uh, under Section 11 violations. Um, you can even go to the magistrate or report uh, Section 11. If there's some animal that is injured, you can also um, go under Section 111L of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act, which is a cognizable offense. Um, killing an animal, giving unnecessary pain and suffering. If it, a lot of times in these farms, a large patricage farms, a whole lot of, uh, you know, 30,000, 50,000, 1 lakh, 2 lakh birds are kept. Several of them are dead. Nobody knows how they died, why they died. They just flung in some corner. Or some buffalo, which is just tied with a one and a half foot chain in a dairy, getting oxytocin shots every day, twice a day. The, the calf is starved to death. Just day before yesterday, um, some children from my office went to, uh, uh, you know, an illegal dairy in Delhi to check it out. And they suddenly saw that this huge big pipe, those sewage pipes, there's some bleating sound coming from, from it. And they went uh, to check uh, who was bleeding. And it was a little calf whose leg was tied. And this pipe was half full with sewage water. So they waddled through the sewage water, went inside and opened its leg and brought it out. And this poor calf has maggot wounds and stuff like that. Three days old. So dairies uh, and poultry farms and all these fisheries are probably, they perpetuate cruelty to another level, to much more animals. How many dogs are there in street dogs in this country? Four crores. How many uh, poultry birds are there? 40 crores, just the layer birds we're talking about, just the egg laying hens. Stop giving them business, report their cruelty, stop having milk, report the dairies. I mean, the 40, 50 crore cattle, they're all living hor horrendous lives. Sometimes I'd say even the street dogs are better off than them, much, much better off than them. So that cruelty we don't recognize. In fact, we buy chicken from illegal meat shops to feed to the dogs. I mean, you can easily, dogs are omnivorous creatures, you can easily keep them vegetarian. Do not give business to cruel industries. That's step number one. Do not give business to them, not for yourself, not for your pets. And the second is to report their cruelty under Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act, sometimes under nuisance. If it is uh, in a residential area, there are NGT guidelines. There are also, um, I mean, CPCB guidelines. There are also... Um, provisions um, 268, 269 IPC, which you can uh, use to report these dirty, filthy um, farm animal uh, facilities, uh, which are not only being cruel to animals, but are by violating um, environmental norms and they're causing a nuisance. Can you live next to a poultry farm? You probably can't. You'll die of ammonia, right? And and uh, the the, the Mosquitoes and the flies would be so many that you won't be able to uh, take off your COVID mask ever. So uh, these are horrible places. And they have been perpetuating because we've just been so focused on some species. So let's have a wider uh, range of things to think about and to act on um, as and when the opportunity comes to present itself. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, Varnika, any, any last thoughts from you, please? So, like last thoughts on cruelty on farm animals. <laughs> yeah, on farm animals or anything else you like to say. Definitely on farm animals and uh, anything that you would like to say. Most. Uh... So, see, as uh, Gorji said, definitely there is much more cruelty in farms rather than you know we see in our daily environment. If you you go to any dairy, just any dairy near to your house, you can see you know several rules are broken as soon as you will enter the dairy so you will come come to know not all some dairies are actually good but uh, uh, you will see and as soon and even on road you know when you see those chickens are going in front of your car in those cages they are uh, going uh, for slaughter and anything so you know just see like actually they they have never come out of those cages dogs are at least roaming free so in farms actually people uh, and especially chickens 
um for them these you know chickens are not living creatures they are not taking oxygen they are their food they see them as their food so if you you see if humans are um looking at an animal just as a food so what kind of you know uh, cruelty and brutality it must be yeah. going on in the farms and in the meat shop so this has to be recognized more and people on uh, people those who are even you know eating it they are even many times are not aware of it yeah so if if you tell them then if there is this awareness then i have seen that you know many people that's why they turn and they stop eating these animals thank you thank you so much vanika um uh, you know there are so many questions first uh, i just have to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for your time and before i conclude i would just want to say that there are so many other questions uh that everybody else had so uh, this is where i'm just taking the opportunity goriji i'm hoping that we can have another webinar with you because of course we did not get enough time today with you and uh, there are so many more questions that we want for you to take on so many of them are just waiting you know they're hoping that their questions can be answered so two things uh, gauri ji please tell us that you will join us for another webinar sure so i'd be happy to super super so that's one so i'm, I'm glad uh, that you said that so for all the 40 of us who are still on the call uh, she will be there again we will be circulating another uh, note hopefully very soon uh for anybody who really wants to uh, ask questions that are very urgent and very important i've just left a uh, i've left an email id that says emergency desk at the yapo.org uh you can drop your questions there and our team will uh, respond and address them so that's that and uh, again just to close i want to thank both of you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules and uh, we can't thank you enough for sharing your knowledge with us I think I speak on behalf of everybody who's attended this webinar today. That uh, we're all feeling very confident, um, you know, with respect to approaching animals in emergency situations. I feel like the three key takeaways for me has been that uh, one, no effort is small effort. We just need to continue making that effort. Um, second is, of course, a friendly demeanor goes a long way. And third, that we must know our laws. Like you said, acquaint, acquainting ourselves with laws over and over again. That's the only way we all uh, can fight this. So yes, I'd like to thank everybody once again uh, for joining in. Like I said, if there are any questions, we've given you an email ID, and hopefully we will have another webinar soon. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sanjana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bye, Manika. Thank you. Bye, bye, Manika.